there, everybody. It's Mary Kirby, and I'm at Inmarsat headquarters in London, and I'm about to fly a satellite, which is something I've never done before, so I'm looking forward to it. So I actually told a little lie. Uh, I'm not at Inmarsat to fly satellites. I'm here to interview Inmarsat chairman and CEO Andrew Sukawati, so here is my interview. Okay, so yesterday um, I visited with TALUS. They showed their in-flight connectivity suite, which obviously Swift Broadband is playing a big role in. And they said some interesting things during the press conference. They said that uh, Swift Broadband is foundational to what they're doing for in-flight entertainment and connectivity. But they also said that down the road they may augment that service with KA band. Now, there's been some recent reports in the press that Amarsat is looking into KA band. Can you talk at all about that? Are, uh, where, where does that interest lie, and, and, and are those reports accurate? Well, we never talk about sort of what the future might bring in right. terms of our investment stream or our competitive business, but, but I would say this. We've been very aggressive over the years about modernizing our services. And so Amarsat 4s, which have only been up, three years, have state-of-the-art for mobile applications, and Arrow is one, it's on ships, it's mobile for defense, all sorts of things. And so what we do with that today, we think economically, is state-of-the-art. Um, of course, we're looking very hard at what the next wave might bring, but um, you know, the, the business world has is, is got dead bodies all over the place with people that got years ahead in technology because the art of the doable is not always the art of the economically feasible. Right. And so, you know, people on K-Band is one big example you could draw um, that goes back now for not very many years, but, you know, with connections. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, we had a situation where people saw what the art of the doable was, but they didn't understand what the art of the economical was. Right. And so the, this economic feasibility plays a big role in what we're thinking about. I think that our customers, whether they're airlines and airline customers or private jet customers or our government customers, I think what they've come to depend on from us is that when we put something in place, it's going to be there, it's going to work, and it's going to stay there for a very long period of time because the capital investments they make to put this on an aircraft or a ship are enormous. And to be tearing things out and putting something else in because the service was discontinued economically it didn't work, it's just not on right. for these kinds of customers. So we're being very careful and deliberate. We know Swift Broadband works, mm -hmm. it works very well, and we know that it's economical to put on board and to maintain and to function. We also think with some of the new passenger connectivity services that it's economical for serving those as well. In fact, we think it's the, the most economical thing to put in place. As bandwidth demand grows and these applications are proven in, we're also fairly certain, you know, broader bandwidth services are going to be required. But the timing of that is key. So we'll see. I mean, there's things you can do to improve Swift broadband that could improve your ability to serve those applications. There may be things with other frequencies that we would put up in the sky that would also support it. But we're not sort of willing to declare our hand on that now. We're kind of focused on what we can deliver. Okay, okay. You mentioned Connection B, and obviously a, a big example of, of a business model that did not work. Mm -hmm. um, has the uh, business model changed enough today for KU to be viable for airline connectivity? Is, is, is there a big difference, or is it still not quite where it needs to be? I think at this moment in time, it's not where it needs to be. Okay. Uh, will it be where it needs to be in three or four or five years? Possibly. Okay. Um, but I'm, I'm not just saying that because people often focus on the economics of a terminal or how much does it weigh and how much drag does it create. And, you know, that's one part of the equation. But it's also, you know, uh, do the regulators allow it to occur on aircraft? Do they allow it to occur uniformly on aircraft? Or is there airspace limitations in certain parts of the world where they won't allow it. Um, do the airlines importantly accept it? Do the customers accept it? Are there social issues on the aircraft that need to be thought of, dealt with? You know, all these things come into the picture. There's, then there's the more mundane certification on aircraft types and, um, you know, 
certification of the equipment inside as well that changes from time to time. So all these things cause this to have a very long time frame for not only acceptance but for um, the regulatory approval. And, and I think what you're seeing with Swift Broadband, what, what Connections actually did, is started to break the ground for some of that so that we can now see it start to work. And I think these commercial trials you're seeing yeah. are also breaking the ground not only improving in the business model, but with consumers to see what they like, what they don't like. And what they're willing to pay for. And what they're willing to pay for. <laughs> That's a really, really fundamental one. As one famous media executive says, do the dogs eat the dog food? If they don't, you can't make it. And, and right. it's, it's hard to say in this case whether the, not to be demeaning to customers, but whether the dogs will eat the dog food. Right, so that is the big question right now. Will they pay for it? It, it's, it seems that there is no solid answer yet to that. We have a great experiment going on in the United States with air to ground based connectivity via air cell. Um, and yet, it, you know, it, nobody is really quite sure yet um, it, what that type of take up is going to be. I mean, I, I was on a flight recently, it's a fabulous service, mm -hmm. but I think I may have been the only person using it uh, on the entire flight at least from what I could tell. Yeah. Um, so I guess there's that side of the equation, that when you're talking to airlines, um, is that a part of the conversation? Is that part of the conversation? Certainly. Yeah. I mean, who's going to pay for it? Yeah. Is it the customer? Is it the airline? Is it the service provider? Is it you know, the satellite provider? I mean, who, who's going to pay for it? Who's, who's going to make the first move here? But at the end of the day, if the customer is not willing to pay for it in some way, shape, or form, either in terms of the airline ticket they're buying or using it uh, there and paying as they go or as a roaming charge on their mobile bill. I mean, there's a variety of different customer models for paying for this. Right. Um, but unless that's proven in, that they're willing to actually see this as a differentiator for the airline and pay it in the ticket or, or see it as a per use or see it as a natural part of their roaming bill, and still, until that sort of proves itself out, it makes it very difficult for anyone else to decide to pay. Right. Aeronautical is still a rather small part of the overall picture at Inmarsat. It is. Um, but it is growing, yes? Absolutely. How, uh, how um, would you compare the latest aeronautical service Swift Broadband to uh, some of the, you know, your past service, Swift, Swift 64, Classic, in terms of growth? Is Swift Broadband take up faster? Yes. Yeah. It's the fastest growing aero service we've ever introduced. Yeah. In perspective, I think about just over 10% of our revenues are aero. Yeah. But it's been the fastest growing single sector for us. For many years, it was flat, uh, was small. And it's been in the last four or five years where we've really seen some fairly explosive growth. It's come in government and in private jets. Mm -hmm. um, not so much in commercial airlines in this passenger connectivity. It's been a very, very small piece of it. And it has not taken off dramatically yet, although there's lots of trials going on. Yeah. Um, but we've really seen explosive growth in government and, and in uh, private jets. And the reason for that is we've moved beyond voice into data. And the kind of people who get on these airplanes demand data connectivity when they're in an aircraft. So right. Swift 64 provided that at one level. Swift Broadband provides it at the next level. Okay. So that's really what's driving this growth. It's people doing emails from the jet. One of the, uh, the, the, the key uh, pluses of Inmarsat Swift, uh, Swift Broadband that is cited time and again is global and that it is the only truly global solution so that if you are a private jet operator and you want to fly all over the world with connectivity, you can. Um, is that is Swift Broadband uh, is is the Inmarsat solutions going to be really the only global solution out there for this foreseeable future? In your opinion, I sure hope so. Yeah. 